drop this young lady off and then see where the day's gonna take the dog. I wanna thank y'all for joining me on my video. get a Sam McLeod or an SMB here, it is, it's ice cold. That's why I like coming and sitting here. This is this is a little shop that we come to. Bring the babies up here every day. Here, I'll just give you a look around. Old cat coming to join me. We're just a little sorry, sorry store. But much bigger, much bigger than the, the ones you walk up to, you know, you're like putting your hand through the chicken wire or whatever this one's got like three aisles they got a lot of stuff here babies obviously like to come here to get chips and ice cream and i like to come here and drink beer but they also today have my california red so this california red i talked about it before it's carlo rossi 320 pesos that's six dollars and forty cents u.s but you know, I walk up here, so no transportation costs. But I, re I really like that California red. I've talked about it before, how it has some natural effects. <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. Anyhow, I took, uh, took Nanita home. She's got to do her laundry today. I told her, I said, hey, look, just do the laundry over at the house. But a, a lot of... Uh, you know, my Filipino friends, they they don't want to use a washing machine. They want to hand wash it because they, they they say that the washing machine will bleach the colors and stretch the clothes, whatever. So they hand wash their clothes. And if I did, mine used to be the same way until I really got her, showed her how to use a washing machine and I guess she just, you know, succumbed to the easiness, the efficiency, whatever you want to call it, the laziness of a washing machine. And so now she uses the washing machine every day. Matter of fact, we don't even have a dirty clothes hamper. You just dump the dirty clothes in there. She washes every day and hangs it up on the line. Now, obviously, we don't have a uh, dryer, but you know nobody over here has a dryer. You just hang it up on the line. So she does laundry on a daily basis. Where before, you know, once or twice a week, she would hand wash the clothes. So it actually took some, you know, me talking her into it because they didn't. She wasn't interested in using the washing machine. So it's kind of funny today when Anita said, "Yeah, I gotta wash clothes. I was supposed to wash clothes yesterday." I said, "Baby, just bring them over here and wash them. Just throw them in the washer and hang them on the line." She's like, you know, she was just wasn't interested in it. So uh, anyhow, that's what she's doing. I had to take her home, and she's she's going over there washing her clothes it's this gentleman rolling through with some ice cream there 
I only got 50 pesos in my pocket right now. Well, I got a thousand peso bill, but uh, if I buy that ice cream, what am I gonna do? By the time I walk to the house, the shit's gonna be melted. And if I'd have caught that cat going by the house, obviously I'd have hooked everybody up, put some in the freezer. So when I left the house, of course, she was taking a midday nap. Maria was about to take a nap. And if I didn't mind, I said she was gonna take a nap. Frustrations. Some things we'll just never agree on, you know. Um, you know, she being from the village, all she wants to do is sleep. Uh, every day wants to take a nap, even if the work's not done. Folks, a lot of cultural differences that you uh, have daily frustrations about. So, you know, for her priority on sleep is just the frustration of mine because you know hey you sleep all night you don't sleep during the day you sleep at night you work all day you got stuff to do and not in her not from her perspective and, you know in the village what do they do it gets hot midday uh people are underneath the shade tree doing what sleeping yeah it's just the way it is but it's a frustration all right so anyhow I dropped Anita off, you know, took a drive down, down the strip, down through Walker Street. There's a few players staring through the chicken wire. So I came back up here. I said, you know what, I'm going to stop at my Sorry Sorry store. I'm going to try to see if they got the California Red. And I'm going to sit here and drink a couple beers just to kill an hour or two. You know, where she can sit over there and sleep. Because I'm just a good dude like that. So let her sleep, I'll have me a couple beers, watch the traffic go by, try to collect my thoughts, strategize, and all that stuff, strategic planning, and then I'll go back over there and be like, hey, wake up, there's no sleeping, you know, there's no sleeping during the day. So. I had another little disagreement. I call it, you can't really say disagreement, just another little discussion. A conversation, and it has to do with, uh, has to do with uh, gas tanks, gas cylinders for for the village. I've talked about this before, but basically, uh, let, me, let me just back up. Okay, you think, in your mind that you're gonna solve problems for your wife's family on the province or the village. But your way of thinking from the West is, is never their way of thinking or from two differently, totally different cultures. So, for example, they cook with wood in the village. So we bought them a rice cooker, electric rice cooker. That way they, they don't have to cook the rice with the wood. They go out and gather wood and start a fire. So they bought them an electric rice cooker. They used it for one month until they got the electric bill. The electric bill was triple what it normally is <laughs> because of that damn rice cooker. And then they put it back in the box and put it underneath something and haven't used it since. At least that's the story I've been told. Because unless you agree, agree to pay the electric bill, they're not going to use it. Because they got to pay the electric bill. Going out and finding wood, that's free. So using an electric rice cooker, that runs up the electric bill. So that flopped. The only way it'll work is if you agree to pay the electric bill, which I'm not going to. So then I said, okay, let's buy them a gas stove. Gas is cheap. You know, we're paying like... I don't know, just say around 800 a cylinder. That cylinder lasted us about three months. So you figure for the village, it, it lasts at least a month. You know, the I can't remember how many kilos it is, but like the, the typical size, you see them in my videos, but you know, the typical size of a gas grill in America, right? So say roughly 15, 16 bucks for that thing. But... I ordered the stove on Lazada, had it delivered, and I wasn't just going to send the money because I was worried the money would get diverted for other purposes, and I wanted to make sure I bought them when I bought them. 
So I said, you know, hey, figure it out. Let, let me know how I can pay for it. And that's, folks, that's been months in the making, right? So that stove has just been sitting there in the box. We can't use it because I don't have a gas cylinder. Just cook with wood. So out of the blue, a few minutes ago, she texts me and says, Oh, my mom went and she checked it out. And you can buy this huge tank. It, if you buy the package deal, it's a huge tank. 22 kilos of gas. You get a free stove. And you get a free 11 kilogram tank. So it's like a big tank. Then you get a small tank for free. And she says it's only 11,000 pesos. Fuck, 11,000 pesos. That's 220 US dollars. That's more than most people here make in a month. You know, like, you know, uh, like it was nothing. And I'm like, wait a minute, wait, whoa, wait a minute. I said, look, we, we get a tank, we get a tank uh, changed out for 800 pesos delivered. What, what are you talking about, 11,000? Oh, what's this set? It's a package deal. Comes with free delivery. Okay, well, whatever. They get a free. They get a ain't nothing free. You get a you get a stove, a small tank, and a big tank. And they said if you don't buy it now, the gas prices are going up next month. Yeah, I'm tracking on all that stuff. So eleven thousand, <laughs> like it's nothing, right? And then she says, or if you just want to get the tank with the gas, it's five thousand. That's a hundred bucks. I said okay and I said well uh, yeah I'll think about it you know when we get home we'll talk about it whatever and she's like pressing me like she needs an answer right now I'm sitting there you know what I, I was talking about this months ago nobody took any action to investigate this months later somebody takes action and says you know the, the, these are the options do it now because you said because you said you'll hear that so much you can you can be thinking out loud and then they'll hold you to it but you said anyhow the bottom line is i do want to get him a gas tank but the lesson is you don't just call me up and, and say hey this one's eleven thousand and expect me to buy it on the spot but that's how things work nobody uh, the old lady or people in the village take into account this thing called a payday or <laughs> you know when your check drops when your money drops or maybe you have uh, other bills to pay priorities right or uh, or whatever none of that plays into their strategy or factors into their mind it's you said eight months ago you wanted to buy us a gas tank and we finally went and and, t and found somebody that had some and they would deliver and now it's time to pay up it just don't work like that but that's how it works in their mind so now the old lady's pissed you know oh my god you said you said yeah, I said when I get home, we'll talk about it. I'll figure out what I want to buy them and when I'm going to buy it for them, and we'll go from there. There's no reason to get pissed off. What do you want me to do? Well, what they expect is to tell them, oh, just, oh, get the, oh, yeah, get the package deal. Let me run over to fucking Palawan right now and send 11,000 pesos. Like I got 11,000 pesos growing out my asshole. I have to keep things real with you, my friends. Especially for the younger generation that has no life experience or the older generation who have never been over here before. I got to keep everything here as real as I can for you. Um, just so you understand things. If you ever suggest something or brainstorm out loud and... Your, your Filipino wife hears it it's you said no no I didn't say we were like 
discussing things. We were planning. We were plotting. We were brainstorming. No, no, no. You said... That's it. And if your plans change or financial situation changes, it doesn't matter. You said... It's one of them things. It's like I hear that all the time. It's right up there with, you know, sorry, sir, not available. You hear that every day. And you said, <laughs> oh, my gosh. If she wants to be pissed, she can just be pissed. It's like the same thing with, you know, when her sister popped out a kid and they expected me to pay for it. Be pissed all you want. Not affecting my blood pressure. Not affecting my heart rate. I'm sitting here with a, I'm sitting here with a cold beer and a fucking bottle of wine. And beautiful sunny weather. Beautiful ladies walking by. And you know what? You're you're on my time. We're on my time frame. Not anybody else's that calls me up and says, you got to make a decision right now because you said, no, don't work like that, folks. If you can't be happy and say, okay, all right, when we get, when you get home, you know, we'll talk about it. Okay, thanks. You know, you're so nice to my family. You're just going to get pissed off when I say, okay, we're going to talk about it when I get home. Up to you up to you. I'm not the one asking you for money. So anyhow, folks, that's kind of a topic for the day. And again, I'm just sitting here at this little sorry, sorry store. People coming by looking at the GoPro at the back screen.